Hello friends, today we're gonna create this image here together in Photoshop and if you would like to follow along with me as we go through this tutorial, you can download this exact photo for free down in the description below. Now during this tutorial, I'm gonna be using my editing tablet which is the Wacom Intuos Pro. It's the older version but still gets the job done. If you have an editing tablet, I highly encourage you to use it for this tutorial and if you do not have an editing tablet and you're interested in one, I have a few recommended tablets over on my website. I'll leave a link for that down below as well. Now an editing tablet just makes it a little bit easier to make those fine-tuned adjustments when you're painting and lighting effects. However, you can do this with a mouse still. So if you don't have an editing tablet and you're just using your mouse today, don't feel discouraged. You can still edit your photo just like the one that we're going to create here. So once you have this photo downloaded, we're going to open it into Photoshop as we see here. Now since I want to have the glowing shape over the stairs here, we need to darken everything so that the glow actually makes sense. So to do that, we'll add three different adjustment layers. We'll start with an exposure adjustment layer. Here within the adjustments panel, we'll click on the exposure adjustment layer. And we're just gonna bring down the overall exposure like this. This is just darkens down the entire image and gives us a bit more of a baseline for the photo before we do some other editing adjustments. The next thing we'll do is add our color balance adjustment. We'll click on that there within the adjustments panel. And I wanna make this feel a little bit more cool, blue and like mysterious. So within the tones here, in the mid-tones, I'm going to increase the blues and the cyans. Then I'll go to my shadows and do a similar thing, a bit of blue and a bit of cyan. And then I'll go to my highlights and add a bit of cyan once again. Now the final thing we're going to do is add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. We're going to bring down the brightness even more. So this is going to darken our photo quite a bit at this point. But what we'll now do is click on that layer mask, grab our brush tool by pressing B, set our foreground color to black, our brush opacity to 100%. And I'm just going to paint over the middle of our photo here. And then also I'm going to paint over the trees here, the, the lighter areas of the trees, because I want that to be kind of glowy and bright while the foreground stays dark. So I'm just painting over that. And if you're using your editing tablet, make sure to click on this little button here so that pen pressure is enabled. It just makes life much easier when you're going and painting in these brightness adjustments here. I'm just gonna lighten this up a little bit more, double clicking on the exposure adjustment layer, bringing that up just a touch. So now we can see things a little better. Now I'm gonna just shift click all these, press Command or Control G to group them. And now I'll call this to BG adjustments. Since we'll be working with so many layers in this tutorial, it's gonna be important to name and group your layers to keep everything organized and easy to follow. As well, I'm gonna be going through this relatively quickly because otherwise this tutorial will be like an hour long. So I'm trying to explain things as best I can as I do it in a reasonable time. Now let's go and add our shape. Since I just want a rectangle over the staircase here, I'll just go and select my rectangle tool. I'm gonna to make sure the fill is set to transparent and the stroke, I'm gonna choose this light blue color. You can pick your color as you'd like by clicking on the color picker and then choosing from there. Now I'm going to click and drag out a shape. Now I need to set the stroke of our shape and I'm just gonna put 20 pixels in here for now. That works for my image and this will be the thickness of your glowing shape. Now I wanna get rid of this bottom part of the shape here. So I'm gonna grab my marquee tool and I'm going to just select the area of the rectangle that I want to actually keep in my photo. Now I'm gonna click on my rectangle layer, click the layer mask icon, and now that will just get rid of that bottom part of the rectangle. Now with that layer mask selected, you'll notice down here where I've placed it, there's like this log in the way. So we need to just mask that out. So grab my brush tool with that layer mask selected, foreground color set to black, opacity at 100%. I'm just gonna be using a soft brush here and I'll just go and mask out this area and then I might just do the same just to soften the edges of this. Now if you need to do any more adjustments you can just grab your move tool and refine your shape as needed. I might just make it a bit skinnier and that looks good there. Okay, so now let's go and start adding our glow effects to the shape itself. We're gonna first do that by duplicating our shape layer a couple of times. We're gonna click on that rectangle layer, press Command or Control J to duplicate it once. And then now with that layer selected, we're going to right click and go to rasterize layer. Now with that layer rasterized, we're gonna to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And then we can just set a light blur amount. We don't wanna to go too crazy with it at this point. We just want to have enough so that it kind of extends out from the outer edge of our shape. So I'm gonna go around 12 pixels for now, click okay. Now we're gonna duplicate that blur layer once again. We'll just rename this to blur one, duplicate that layer. And then we'll once again add a Gaussian blur, this time more intense. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 
and then increase the pixel radius a bit more. Now click OK. Next, I'll call this to Blur 2, just to keep things organized. Shift click both those layers, and then we'll set the blending mode from normal down here to screen. Lastly, we're gonna go back to our original rectangle layer, double click on it to open our layer styles, and we'll go to the outer glow. I'm gonna set the outer glow to basically white here. I'm going to make sure the blending mode is set to linear dodge add. I want the contour to be this option right here. And then we can adjust the size and spread accordingly. We just don't want to have any like spaces around the edges because if you increase this, it starts to look a little bit weird. So you just want to have a nice subtle effect here and you might have to bring down the opacity just to make everything blend a bit. Zooming in can kind of help to see how things are looking. You just want it to be like a subtle contoury glow to help make it look like it's an actually glowing tube rather than just a shape that you put on your photo. And I might actually change this color quickly just to be more of a cyan, like a really light blues rather than the white. These are my settings here if you'd like to pause the video and see them more in depth, but I'm going to click OK and continue on with the project. So now we have the basic glow of our shape. So the shape itself is glowing, but now we need to start adding some glows to the ground to make everything blend and look really cool. So I'm going to first group all these layers, press Commander Control G to group them. Now we're going to create a new transparent layer. Grab our brush tool by pressing B, hold Alt or Option and click on the shape that you've created to sample that color. Now it will be set to your foreground color. From there, we can go and just paint a circle at 100% opacity right at the base of one side of the shape. Now with that layer selected, access the move tool by pressing V, and I'm just going to hold the shift key and squish this down so it kind of becomes flat. Now I'm gonna position this over on the hillside here or the side of the trail, and then just angle this to be at the same plane as the ground, that's the trail there. Now I'm going to add a layer mask to this, and I'm just going to bring down the opacity of this layer really quickly so I can see what's beneath because we need to just mask out this log. So adding a layer mask to our new layer there with black set to your foreground color and your brush tool selected, I'm going to just go and paint out or mask out any area that's on the log here so that it's basically hidden behind rather than going over top of. So now the glow will only be taking place behind our log. And now we need to do some blend if adjustments to make this blend in with the ground. So double clicking on that glow layer, we're gonna go to our blend ifs with it set to gray. And then on the underlying layer, hold Alt or Option, click on this little pointer right here and it will feather it out. And then just increase this until you get like a nice blend with some of the shadows. Now, if you're not sure what blend if does, I've already talked about that in a previous tutorial on this channel. I'll leave up in the corner right now if you're interested in that. Anyways, I'll click OK. That looks a lot better for me. And we're going to repeat the same process now on the other side. So I'm going to duplicate this glow right layer, and then I'll right click on the layer mask and go to delete layer mask. Now I'll grab my move tool by pressing V and move this over to the other side, rotate it so that it's on the same angle as the ground on the other side there and maybe just shrink it in a little bit as well. And I might just do a little bit of fine tuning to that blend if slider to hide it from the branches a little bit more there. Now let's go and add a second glow that we can paint in so that the bottom of our shape blends into the ground a little bit more. So with our foreground color still set to the color of our shape, create a new transparent layer and then select your brush tool by pressing B. Then we'll set the opacity to 50% and I'm gonna have a relatively low flow setting. Now I'm just going to basically paint an area around the base of my shape until the bottom kind of just blends in naturally to the color like that. So it kind of looks like it's coming out of a, a light plume, if you will. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just on the same layer. I went kind of just a little overboard around the log, so I'm just going through with my eraser tool quickly and touching this up to make that glow blend a little bit better around the shape of that. So that works good for me there. Turning that on and off, you can see the bit of a difference there that we've added. Now the final touch that we'll add is just a general glow around our shape. So, and we'll create one more layer, make sure that our foreground color is still set to the color of our shape, grab our brush tool by pressing B. I'm gonna have an opacity of just 20%. I'll set my blending mode to linear dodge add, and I'm just going to go and paint over my shape. I'll go a little bit larger. Now we go to 10% opacity, and then once again, just paint over the outside edges of the shape to give it this like nice glowy feel. And you can even go a little bit beyond the bottom there on the ground just to extend some of that soft color as you'd like. I'm going to group all of these layers and I'm going to call this to shape glow. 
So now we have everything nice and organized based on the adjustment that we have. Now our next step is to do some lighting effects on our subject and then some of the surrounding area to make this blue glow actually look like it's reflecting on other objects. So let's start with our subject here. Zooming into my photo, making sure that my same cyan color is selected, I'm going to create a new layer grab my brush tool by pressing B, and then I'm going to set the brush opacity to about 30% just by pressing three on my keyboard. I'm going to have a relatively hard brush here, about maybe 50%, and we just need to go and paint around the edges of our subject like this. And so the whole goal is to just add a little bit of a highlight around the edge that would be coming naturally off of this light here as if it was really glowing in our scene. Now, if the adjustment is not as visible as you would like, you can of course just bring up the opacity of your brush and that will solve that for you. This will take a bit of fine tuning, but you just wanna go through all the natural edges in the photo. This is where having an editing tablet comes in really handy, but I'll just speed this part up so you can just get a quick idea of what I'm doing. So this took me about 10 or 15 minutes to do and I don't necessarily have the steadiest of hands, so I was constantly undoing things as you see here, and that's a totally normal thing to do. So by pressing Command or Control Z as you go, you can easily undo any of your mistakes. So at first, I'm just going along here with a higher opacity and putting on that main highlight along any of the primary edges. And then I'm going through with a softer brush at a lower opacity to extend that main highlight as you can see on the backpack and the hair and some of the shoulder and things like that. After I did the upper part of the subject, I went down onto her legs and I was just painting a higher opacity along the edges and on some of the creases in her jeans. And then I would go through again with a softer lower opacity brush and just extend that glow as it naturally would appear on the subject as if there was really a light beside her. So now the lighting effects are complete and they're all on their own layer. I'm going to call this to subject lighting. Now we need to go and add some brightening effects to our subject since she's just a little bit too dark at the moment. So I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer. I'm going to increase the brightness of that, maybe bring up the contrast a bit as well. Now with that layer mask selected, I'll press Command or Control I to invert that mask. And now zooming in, making sure my brush tool is selected, I'm gonna just go and brighten any of the areas around the outside of my subject here. Rather than just some color, we're adding in some highlights as well, if you will. And then of course you can adjust the brightness of this as you need right here within the levels adjustment. If you need to remove something, just paint black on the mask instead of white. So just turning that on and off, you can see it just adds a nice subtle glow to the areas that we already painted over. And now we have our subject lit. So that is done. Shift click both of those, command and control G and call this to subject lighting. Turning that on and off, you can see the massive difference that makes to blend our subject within that glowing shape. Now let's go and do the fun part, which is the general lighting effects of our scene. So to start, we'll create a new transparent layer and we will just have the same color as before, the same color as our shape set as our foreground color with our brush tool selected. Now for this effect to work, it's gonna be easier to have your flow set to a lower amount so that way you can just paint and it's not gonna just all go on to your image at once. It's like painting lightly on your photo essentially. That's what the flow will help you with. Then I'll also have a lower opacity about 50 to 70%. Now what we need to do is just go and paint over anything that would naturally have light on it. In this case, this tree, since it's so close to our shape, it would have some light reflecting on it. Now, one thing that will help you is if you just click once near the edge of the tree, hold the shift key and click again, you can just easily outline the shape of the tree. I'm just continuing to hold shift and you can add that lighting effect without needing to have a super steady hand because I do not have a steady hand. I'm not much of an artist myself. So that little trick just really helps to create straight lines when I need to. Now from there, you can just go and touch up any areas that need a little attention and you can continue to just paint lightly around the edges that would maybe have a little bit more of a highlight to it and then just bring down the opacity of that brush and we'll just paint right along the edge here just to extend that glow and like round it out essentially round it around the tree now i'm going to double click on that layer and i want to just bring back some of those shadows in the tree so hold alter option on the underlying layer of blend if i'm going to bring that in a touch and that will just make that glow look a little bit more natural i'll call this layer to tree glow and then we'll create a new layer and this will be our general glow. Now with a 10% opacity, I'm gonna go with a soft brush and just paint over any areas that would likely have a hint of color from this glow. So that's gonna be 
a lot of this foreground area. I might even bring down my flow a little bit more as well here. And it's gonna be some of this area in the background. And you can increase that op brush opacity as you need. Paint a little bit more blue around this area. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned that's really helpful that you probably already know, but if you make a mistake, you can just press Command or Control Z to undo. I do it all the time and it's very helpful because then you don't have to erase anything. You can just undo it. Now with that glow adjustment, I'm going to once again do a little bit of blend if, just hold Alt or Option on the shadow of the underlying layer to feather that out and it will just help to blend those colors in a little bit better. Now to add one final glow to this, yes, there's gonna be one more glow. We're gonna go and just add some color to the sky here. So on that new layer, I'm going to go and just paint over with a 40% opacity and a low flow. I'm just gonna paint over all of the sky here just to give it a hint of color to match that cyan feel of the shape that we have. And I'll shift click these layers, press Command or Control G, and call this to BG Glows. Now at this point, you could also add some highlight effects just like we have so far to the steps and other like trees and things. I'm just going to not do that for the sake of time, but we're gonna now go and do our general adjustments to bring the whole photo together. The first adjustment that we're gonna create is a gradient map. Clicking on that gradient map, we're gonna set our shadow color to a darker version of the color that we already have. So like this, since I had a cyan color, I'm gonna just bring that down a little bit, click OK, and I want the highlights to be white, click OK. Now I'll set that from normal down here to overlay, and then I'll go to the opacity, and I'll just bring this down to zero, and then work my way back up until I find something that I'm happy with. So that looks pretty sick right there. Now to finish everything up, we'll add a dodge and burn adjustment layer. Press Command or Control, Shift and N to bring up your new layer dialog box. Set the mode to overlay, check the fill with neutral color option, click OK. And now we'll press O to access our dodge tool, which will brighten. And now we wanna go and brighten any key areas of our photo. So I'm gonna go and brighten around my shape. I'm gonna go and brighten in the sky. The key here is just to go over any important areas that would be brighter naturally because of where the light is coming from in your photo. If you're not sure what to do, just basically lighten any of the areas that you put the highlight onto, just to make life easy there. Now with those effects complete, we'll burn, so select the burn tool there. I'll set the exposure just to 20% there in the mid-tone range, and I'm going to darken around the edges here to add a nice vignette feel, and we're going to darken on any opposite side of our highlight. So on this tree, I'm going to darken the other side there, I'm gonna darken some of these trees in the background. And this just helps to make things feel a little more moody than before. So now with those final two adjustments here, we can turn those on and off. You can see the big difference that makes just bring our photo to life and check out this before and after. That's our before and that's our after. Pretty insane to see the difference there. And all we used was a bunch of custom brush adjustments as well as a stroked shape. This is a pretty awesome effect that's a ton of fun to make and you can add it to just about any photo you want including portraits, landscapes, whatever. Adding these neon shapes is a ton of fun. Now if you've made it this far in the video and you followed along, make sure to leave a comment down below to let me know how your images turned out and of course make sure to hit that like button to show me that you enjoyed today's video and that I should probably try to make more of them. Anyways my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.